Now, on Tuesday, the charity Nordoff Robbins is hosting its annual Christmas carol service, which is also a fundraiser for the UK's largest music therapy charity. And joining me now is Chief Executive of Nordoff Robbins, Sandra Shembury, along with Mervyn Lynn, who's a trustee, and his daughter, Sia, also received music therapy at Nordoff Robbins. So a very good morning to both of you and welcome. Yes. And I'll find out a little bit about what you've got in store for this carol service in a moment, uh, Sandra Shembury. But let's... First of all, explain why you're raising money, what Nordoff Robbins is and what music therapy is. Not a problem at all. So music speaks where word, words fail. So uh, most of our clients um, are nonverbal and they have uh, multiple challenges, which leads to incredible isolation. Uh, music for some of our clients is the only thing that is able to break through and actually helps them be in the world and see the world and engage. And that might be... Um, <laughs> Uh, Kath uh, with her daughter who um, she said to us her home had been silent for five years but through music therapy her daughter had managed to engage enough to want to um, make music and then to actually make sounds so now her daughter she said it, the house is very loud again and that was done through music um, and again if you think about the first things we hear um, when you're in your in the womb it's the noise of the swooshing of the blood and the heartbeat. So that's why the rhythm is so important. So innately, we understand music. So it's able to connect to parts that otherwise um, someone might not be able to engage with. That's so interesting. And, and Mervyn, you've um, seen, haven't you, the effects that music therapy can have through your daughter. Tell us a little bit about her experience of music therapy. Um, well, she is now 21. And she started seizing when she was two and has been on a steady decline since then. The, uh, the seizures have kind of... Um, eroded her memory and, and, and her motor skills and pretty much can't do anything herself. The only thing that she has any connection with really is, you know, music therapy sessions where there's a connection still, there's still a bridge that, you know, that can be crossed that, is, that kind of gives her the satisfaction that she gets, she gets nowhere else. So give us an idea of how she does respond during a session. Um, well... On a good day, when she's, you know, she's been three or four days without a seizure, she, she does the rocking and, um, you know, like this, which, you know, she doesn't do normally. You know, she's, she's pretty, you know, she's, she's non-verbal. She just pretty much sits and watches her DVDs when she can. And you, I have to feed her, you know, and she, she has a tube. But with her music therapy, she, she definitely does the... The, the connection, and, and if she's holding something like a pencil or a, or a, a drumstick, she'll, you know, not in time, but she'll be... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but, she's, but she'll but she's be, yeah, she, she'll be interacting. It's amazing, isn't it? And, and Sandra, it does, it, it can reach lots of different people. Obviously, Sia's experience is one, but they're, you know, people with addiction, people with dementia. It, it can make a real difference to people, can't it? Absolutely. Um, uh, we, we talk about life phase, so from from birth to death, um, music is able to connect in ways, um, whether that's through trauma, as you say, or addiction, or um, dementia. There, it, wherever someone is isolated from the world, music, for some reason, is able to get through. Yeah, but what is the reason? I mean, you talked about that kind of primal thing of having the, you know, in the womb that we hear rhythms, but is there something else about music that communicates in a way that speech sometimes doesn't? It's, there's, a, there's an understanding of it bodily, not just mentally. So actually, there's a physicality to it and there is something about reaching out with music that enables someone to connect in a way that isn't just words we're, we're so reliant if one can speak on the words that we say and the language we give that we forget that language is much 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 more than that and music is able to encompass all of that so it gives someone a route in that they aren't able to find elsewhere that's so interesting and give us a sense of what a session looks like uh, for, for Sia for example well, I mean uh, obviously each session is going to be different depending on who the, the it, therapist it, is dealing it with depends but, but... on what kind of um, where on, C on Sia's seizure cycle she is so the further away from the seizures the more interactive she is but obviously if she's just had a seizure the day before or a couple of days before she's still very um, sedate um, but um, but it's hard to describe the connection until you see something to compare it with. So if you see her normally, it's she's she pretty non, you know, non-interactive really. The world is a complete blur to her. But in that session where there's attention to her, there's someone is you know singing to her, talking to her in such a way that is you know rhythmic. Um, yeah, there is a connection there, and I'm not quite I'm not quite sure. 
Sandra says it far more eloquently than I do, but there is a there is a, a connection there which is non visible, but it's it's mm. certainly there. Do you have to be musical for to, to get benefits from it? No, uh, absolutely. But technically, we would say everyone is musical. So anyone that comes to us that says, "Why well, don't do music?" It's like, let's see, shall we? That's <laughs> but, interesting. But there's also a connection sometimes on a very deep personal level, which can be done through breathing. Like, if you find yourself, if you have a loved one over Christmas that actually they're disconnected for whatever reason, it might be a family member with dementia, sit beside them and breathe with them. Like, that simple act of breathing, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about mm -hmm. it, like in time, it might, they, they might recognise that you're breathing with them and you're attuning to them and, that, and you never know what might come from that. And just, it just needs to be two minutes. It doesn't need to be um, for a long time, but just that, it's connect how you can. So rhythm and connection. Rhythm. Very briefly, your carol service yes. got some big names at it. We do, and we've released some tickets just for today because we know we were coming on. Um, uh, Nile Rogers uh, is going to come on with Chic, amazing for us. Richie Sambora, we've got some incredible speakers as well. So, yes, if you can, please come. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Nile Rogers is amazing. Anyway, good luck with that. Lovely to meet you both. Thanks Thank so you. much Thank for coming you. in. Thank you. Thank you.